Welcome, welcome, welcome back to the Progressive Patriots. There is a lot going on right now. Um, outside of, if we just exclude Ukraine and uh, Palestine, there's a lot of shit going on right now. So I'm not going to be covering those two today. What I'm going to be doing is getting everything else out of the way so that I could give those the, te- the time and attention that they deserve. So let's get right to it. It is January 22nd. It's 1740 right now. Uh, first thing, out of Australia, there are the heat warnings are starting to get pretty drastic, pretty bad. Uh, extreme heat waves are in Western and Southern Australia. They're, those, uh, I think they go by states and like not provinces. Uh, and then severe in New South Wales, Queensland, and the Northern Territory. So uh, why bring it up? First off, if you recall, if you don't recall, then like uh, wake the fuck up. But there was a uh, really dis- destructive wildfire a few years ago. It was it burned down a lot of uh, just everything, <laughs> and so we're at getting into the risk of that happening again. And uh, it should go without saying. Um, somebody let uh, some fucking moron like uh, Vivek Ramaswamy know this shit is happening because of climate change. So, you know, go ahead and pretend it's not real all you want. Here's the fucking tangible evidence. Um, let's get to some stuff in the Americas. So Peru is signing a Well, they've already done it. It's actually about to be completed. Um, So China's building an enormous deep water port in uh, Lima. uh, Well, a little sub-district of Lima. And it's... The whole project was about $3.5 billion. And uh, should be completed... Should be operational by the end of the year. Uh, Late Q3 or uh, early Q4 is the expectation. Uh, This port is going to decrease shipping time. It depends on the vessel. It'll be one to three weeks, and you won't have to go through the uh, Panama Canal, so you don't have to pay the toll, pay the troll toll. (laughs) Uh, 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 uh. So here from um, Peru's trade minister, Juan Matthew Salazar, he said that the Chancay megaport aims to turn Peru into a strategic commercial and port hub between South America and Asia. It's, yeah, that's exactly what's happening. There's already more uh, talks about developing the logistical infrastructure beyond that, right? From uh, specifically what that was mentioned was Brazil, uh, overground routes to get to that port so they can, you know, like ship their stuff. I think China's one, one of the, if not the largest consumer of Brazilian exports, right? So Brazil definitely wants to get in on this action. Um, Traversing the, the, the Amazon is going to be uh, one of the hurdles that they're going to be facing, but the, the trade ministers of Peru and Brazil are start working out some shit like a, like kind of like a free trade agreement or free passage agreement. Like if uh, Brazilian vehicles are destined for for the port, then you know, as long as they're registered or whatever, you can pass through without any questions or serious questions, I suppose. Um, also, the one of the other considerations is because of the the local um, the local ecology the way that the environment is there so like there's sanitary concerns for foodstuffs so yeah that's one of the things that they're looking to do uh, uh, Brazil uh, they, the official word is that they're delighted their exact word 
is they're delighted to not have to use the Panama Canal for everything. Uh, there's going to be the Asia Pacific Economic Cooperation Summit. It's going to be in that's going to be held in Peru in uh, November. So there is a the Xi Jinping is going to be at that summit. So it, it's there is a strong possibility that he's going to be um, at the ribbon cutting for that. And he like will probably be doing the ribbon cutting. But this is um, an example of something like we talked about this shit with Indonesia where they had a, a China help them develop a high speed train for like next to nothing, just basically goodwill. Uh, they're, they're making investments in the long game and Peru, Brazil, uh, they're starting to shift that they could start to shift their, you know, their loyalties. If this is the kind of investment that they can, they're going to get from China, whereas the I, I think it was the the someone from the Biden administration said that like typically d making deals like this with China does not come without some uh, unspoken agreements or unannounced agreements with of like political loyalty and stuff like that. So it's um, to see this big of a of an investment as it's coming to fruition is it's concerning it, <laughs> I'm hopeful though that on um, an unintended third order effect fourth order effect is that some of this uh, some of this pours out pours over into per, uh, Ecuador out of Peru and into Ecuador just because there's a lot of they're having a lot of difficulty right now so uh right so the chankai megaport is it's owned 60 percent owned by uh costco shipping which is a state-owned chinese state-owned uh logistics company and uh 40 percent by vulcan a local mining company that's owned by glencore now <clears throat> I uh, went went and he went ahead and uh, pulled the pulled the pertinence for you. If you are of that persuasion, if you play the game, the uh, Glencore, the symbol, the the uh, yeah, the symbols are G L N C Y. At last time I checked, when I wrote this down, it was ten fifty three a share. G L N C F, G L N C Y is ten fifty three. G L N C F is five twenty seven. So if you wanted to try to get in ahead of that, there are your avenues. Um, if you're able to trade on partials, then Glenn.L is 412, which that seems to be the main, the main category of their, of their shares. But you know, that if you play the game, that's like your choice. I, I'm, I might put a, put a cheeky, couple like a little bit of money a couple like a hundred dollars or something but i don't know it's just uh you know you all fucking investments are taken at your own risk or the whatever the fucking disclaimer is i don't own any of this stuff so that there's no need for disclosures but if you want to play the game and you want to try to get ahead of that big ribbon cutting ceremony that they're gonna have which is definitely gonna it's gonna be a, a boost to Glencore's um, pricing, so if you want to play the game. Otherwise, uh, at China's playing the big, the the long game. Like I said, uh, they're they've invested hugely into South America here, and they're they're constantly chipping away at Asia, at parts of Asia, not all of it, but um, some of that we'll be talking about. I'll be talking about in a little bit. So moving along also in South America, in Argentina, let me do Ecuador first, because this will be, uh, I think this will be, it'll lead into Argentina. So 
uh, the president, President Daniel Naboa, he listed the 22 gangs as uh, terrorists, right? I mentioned that when it happened, like just as it was breaking, we, I was talking about it with you. And so with that terrorism, terrorist designation, more violence has broken out of that. The state, they list him as state prosecutor. Wait, that's right. He's uh, the state prosecutor for the, like, he's like the AG for the state uh, Guayas. That's what it is. The capital city is Guayaquil, and Guayas is the, the state, the larger area. So Caesar, Caesar Suarez was a state prosecutor. He was targeted at, by the gangs, and he was murdered. Um, he was in charge of the investigation into that TV station, like the not live news broadcast that was taken hostage. The whole studio was taken hostage. So, uh, and he's also in charge of the international crime syndicate. Uh, the like the investigations and trials for the for international crime groups that are in uh, Guayas. He's the state prosecutor. He's the AG, basically. Um, so yeah, he was he was rustling some ruffling some feathers, and they had had enough of it. Um, in on on a brave but unfortunate note is that uh, Mr. Suarez had foregone protective services. He had, he had dropped them off May of last year, uh, even though like mo over sixty other members of his office have protective services in one form or another um, whether it's private or the police um, but despite this execution this mob execution the it, there seems to be some some positives working out of this uh, over 2,000 arrests have been made since the state of emergency was declared like almost, just under two weeks ago and pretty much every single everyone, all of the institutions, even the opposition parties, all universally support this effort from the president. Um, the only thing that they don't like is the the tax increase that they're levying to fund all of this. So this is um, it's it's a good move. It's obviously yielding results is what I mean to say. And what I was talking about earlier with the Peru deepwater port is that if this, like, uh, Guayaquil is on the coast as well, or like just next to it. So it's possible that Ecuador could sh set up some shipping lanes, over overland shipping lanes to the uh, Chancay deepwater port in Lima. And they can start to reap some of the benefit as well. Um, the so one of the one of the situations that predicated all of this violence was the escape. I mentioned the the that like crime lord that escaped from prison, um, Jose Adolfo Macias. Uh, his nickname is Fito. Uh, he. I don't remember the name of the like the like the choneros or some fucking chon something or other, uh, but so he had escaped. He is still at large right now, so Fito is still out there. But his entire family had tried to move to Argentina, <laughs> uh, so they his family was detained um, and they were deported back to Ecuador. The security minister of Argentina, uh, Patricia Bullrich, noted eight who had moved into the area called Cordoba on January 5th. So they had purchased the home in November, I believe it was. And they were uh, kind of waiting for a second. And then uh, Macias breaks out of prison and they they move into that home not too long after that 
and I expect he was that uh, Macias was trying to get there. Like, it's pretty fucking obvious. But now that his family got kicked back to Argentina or to Ecuador out of Argentina, um, that house was probably seized. <laughs> so you don't even have that anymore. Um, yeah. Argentina is um, they're they're all in to help Ecuador, it seems. Argentina uh, th from the interior minister, Guillermo Francos, he's the interior minister of Argentina. His words, Argentina is not going to be a narco country, nor are our provinces going to be a den of criminals. We are determined to combat this type of crime. So, I mean, typical politician shit, but at the same time, it's uh, kind of made his made it pretty clear <laughs> that if anybody from Ecuador who escaped from prison tries to go there, uh, maybe uh, pick somewhere else. Now, move it, keeping in the Americas, we are moving up to the Central American republics. One is... So El Salvador, the most recent woman who had been imprisoned for quote-unquote abortion made public comments, and her, her words were specifically calling for people to stop shaming and accusing women who have medical difficulties during pregnancy because uh, they uh, I'll read you some examples in, in a little in just a second but uh, so El Salvador has among the strictest abortion laws on earth there um, there are not very many who are more strict than this uh, and yeah and most of them are in the Americas too which is fucking sad but the there is the possibility of 30 to 50 years in prison for quote unquote abortion and i keep using quote unquote because so there was one of the examples was this woman they like they just the name that they gave her for the sake of anonymity was leslie she was sentenced to 50 years 50 for having a stillbirth. For having a fucking stillborn baby. She was sentenced to prison. The accusation. The completely unfounded accusation, mind you. Is that she stabbed the baby to death. When there, the baby's body had no fucking stab wounds on it. All she did was cut the umbilical cord herself. Because she knew that she was... She was, she was going to deliver a dead baby. She knew that already, so she just did it at home. Because if she didn't, then she would be accused of murdering the baby for whatever the fuck reason they make up. <clears throat> Another situation, um, the, ass the assumed name here is Beatrice. She had appealed to the Supreme Court of El Salvador. Uh, kind of like Kate Cox, right? It's a very similar situation where she appealed to the Supreme Court for an abortion because the fetus was developing with anencephaly, which is when the brain and the skull do not fully develop or they don't de they don't develop in the right ways. I believe it's just. A, yeah. And the thing is that this will result in the death of the child this is not up for debate the child is going to die once it's born it'll be born it'll live for a few hours in agony in fucking pain misery the most horrible feelings you could possibly fucking think of that you that a lot of people like to think of when they say when they like talk about abortion like those bullshit fucking um little stories like oh mom i loved you so much and then you made me burn alive and then i was gone like shut the fuck up that's you're making shit up you're projecting your fucking feelings onto a fetus in this instance 
the same people who claim to have to want to protect children or whatever because oh we don't want we don't want to kill them or hurt them or or anything like that or deprive them of life look at what this this baby was born with an incomplete brain and an incomplete skull all it does is feel pain and agony just total physical anguish until it dies a few hours later which is completely guaranteed 100% guaranteed there is no surviving this but um, she had other health complications going into the pregnancy and because she was not allowed to deliver this baby which was not developing properly she wasn't allowed to terminate and she had she was told that because she couldn't terminate that caring to term would most likely result in her dying um, because of her other health complications and she did end up dying four years later and could would she have whatever other health complications have taken her life at some other point why the fuck are we speculating that shit the point is that this could have been avoided that four years could have been completely avoided because uh, an unviable fetus was carried to term because what why to spare the baby spare spare it of what what are you sparing it from unbelievable so most recently the assumed name here is Lillian uh, gave birth in the hospital okay I it's important that you understand this that you you grasp this specific detail gave birth in the hospital the there was complications with the child so the child was under constant just complete supervision of the hospital staff doctors nurses etc so the she gave birth in the hospital she was being monitored in the hospital the baby was taken under and it was under the care of doctors 24 7 supervision of the baby because it was in dire straits three days later the baby dies okay she hasn't had any very little if any interaction with this child baby dies three days later under the care under the supervision of doctors the mother was charged with neglect and abandonment and murder you, you gotta be fucking kidding me <sighs> um, so after seven years of uh, this woman Lillian in prison the judge overturned the sentencing because she and her daughter were in a vulnerable condition in the hospital when the quote unquote murder when that happened like how did you not like you took seven years of this young woman's life away because you're a fucking idiot virtue signaling <laughs> oh my goodness the child was in the care of doctors and she's charged with murder because <laughs> she let doctors take care of it I um I'm really struggling to put that one together uh, so there are so Nicaragua Honduras El Salvador and Dominican Republic these are the other countries that have just as strict of abortion uh, bans blanket there's no exceptions whatsoever no exceptions for rape no exceptions for incest no exceptions of the child being like i described earlier non-viable fetus doesn't matter the birth giving birth will kill the mother and probably also kill the child which usually happens in most cases doesn't matter none of those things matter and that's the type of shit that 
mm, the fucking Republicans want to have here in the U.S. Like, this is unacceptable. Completely unacceptable. I, uh... <sighs> this is one of the things that's going to be on the ballot in November. It's not a referendum on, I don't know, this is one of the liberties that's at stake. You, as a woman, your, your right to choose what you do with your body, your health care decisions being between you and your doctor. Um, I cannot imagine that any of these women, uh, we'll go with um, specifically Beatrice, to have the non-viable fetus carried to term. I am more than certain that she was not fucking thrilled at having to terminate that pregnancy. It wasn't, it's not a fucking game the way that Republicans like to try to make it out to be. Like, it's this, oh, you know, like, they'll, it'll be like um, notches on a belt. Uh, look at how many abortions I've had. It's, dude, no. Okay, no. Mr. Mr. Fuckface Trump with his, uh, I was so proud to overturn uh, Roe v. Wade. The same shit that he kept saying he wasn't going to do, right? The same thing that all those fucking Supreme Court appointees said they weren't going to do. Uh, but he keeps, they keep, they all bring it up like the, that, like the partial birth abortion shit. Like, my man, what are you talking about? What is this? Oh, nine pregnancy, nine month pregnancy terminations. I don't, I know why they do it. They bring up those extremely rare examples as a means to give, to give the baby, give the fetus, the baby, the child, whatever, more, more license, um, to make it more real, like they're murdering a child, which, just my personal opinion, uh, doing it voluntarily is un not cool. It's not my decision. It's not like up to me to decide if people can or not, but that's, to me, that's not acceptable. But that's an extremely rare circumstance. Um, if parents are having to make that decision to terminate at that late stage, they're not doing it because they want to. They absolutely are not. Uh, and if they do, it's situations like Beatrice, where they discover that all three hours of the baby's life are going to be torture. Unreal. Something a little positive, slightly positive, I guess, uh, in Guatemala. The new president was sworn in. There was a delay. Bernardo Arevalo was sworn in. And what happened is the attorney general of Guatemala, who is a, a, is a friend or appointee loyalist of the previous president, uh, Alejandro Giamete. Giamate. There we go. So the AG tried to force through Congress uh, a, a measures that would just strip the presidency, uh, the office of the president with, of almost all of its power, making it a ceremonial position, basically. Um, he was also trying to pass measures to suspend the Progressive Party of Guatemala, which goes by Semilla, or Seed, right? Seedling. Um, so he was going to suspend the party from ha its operation uh, operations across the board. And he was also going to just completely annul the election, which is kind of weird. It's like you're trying to annul the election, but you're also trying to take powers away from the seat you're trying to get your dude back into. So what the fuck ever. Um, so Arvalo, uh, a lot a lot of his supporters, 
Um, he built a really strong coalition of the often neglected, like tale as old as time, the, the indigenous people of the land, of the region are treated like garbage, but he built the coalition of the working class uh, and indigenous peoples. And so when that attorney general tried to do that, the, <laughs> the, um, the Semia supporters, uh, stormed the Capitol. <laughs> they, uh, they broke into the buildings and were pre like preventing the rightful winner from being uh, removed or the rightful winner from not being able to take office. So it's like, um, it, imagine if it like January 6th, except the election was stolen. Like it was actually because it wasn't, it isn't, it was never stolen. It like you lost bitch, get over it. Right. So if that's kind of the situation we're looking at here is uh, preventing the the corrupt retention of power is what the uh, Samia party did. So congratulations to them. Um, Aravalo is a very strong left leaning candidate, uh, strong left. And hmm. in another weird situation the supreme court of guatemala ruled that the opposition party is going to retain their uh, control of the congress um stripped all semia representatives in congress of their party like so this is like a, a, a attempt number two the AG tried to suspend the party altogether, and this, here the Supreme Court removed their party status, making them all independent uh, representatives, which really hinders their ability uh, as a coalition to enact change of any variety. But it's what is weird. I think this was after the the I don't know the good J six maybe i think i want to put it like that um the so the while the semia party of their i don't remember the exact numbers uh, semia has like 25 or 26 representatives and there's uh, over a hundred others of the opposition so um they actually voted for uh samuel perez alvarez the to be the uh, leader of the Congress, the president of the Congress. So that's, uh, I guess, uh, <laughs> I guess they figured out, like, we're going to have to beat these guys at the ballot box. Um, and we're not doing a good job. <laughs> um, but yeah, he got a lot of, a um, lot of congrats. Um, I know Biden did. Biden congratulated him. Plenty of others did as well. The leader of Honduras, the president, is another like hard left politician. Xiaomara Castro uh, was present for the inauguration, uh, even including the delay, was present for the whole thing. Uh, Chilean president uh, Gabriel Boric, also a hard left kind of guy. He couldn't stay, unfortunately, but... He was still there. Like, he was there in spirit. So one of the biggest problems that Arvalo is going to be facing, it, having to deal with, is the flow of migration from South America and from Guatemala to the U.S. That's, uh, I believe, going to be the first, like the big biggest topic between us and Guatemala, us being the U.S. And right. The, so the thing is that dealing with uh, Aravalo, you're you're dealing with a progressive candidate or progressive politician, right? <clears throat> so um, he's he has said uh, in in his like official positions that. In his administration, migrants would be treated that that are in Guatemala's territory would be treated with dignity, respect, compassion in the same way we will demand that Guatemalan migrants are treated abroad. Um, 
previously, the guy uh, Giamate was he was one of those like iron fist kind of guys. You know what I mean? And he used to use the military like whenever a U.S. Po like politician would pressure her, Guatemala, he would just use the military to like rough up the migrants and uh, kind of discourage them in a very painful way. Um, I'm very keen to see Aravalo's plans. Uh, I will. It's, he's a uh, like young Anakin Skywalker. I'll be watching his career with great interest. Hmm, looking at what time we're at now, still a lot to go. I got a lot. Okay, so I'm going to defer the uh, South Asia Sea stuff and the other things in Asia. So let's go into the Congo. Um, so we had mentioned before the election that was taking place and like pretty much the instant that there was a an irregularity of any kind the opposition candidates started calling uh calling it corrupt and everything um their their grievances are not unfounded they are not with without foundation um they're so it's I don't know. I don't want to say that they're just, you know, crying wolf or anything because the, um, the Congolese have been marred with corruption for who knows how long at this point. But So the leading opposition candidates, uh, Martin, Martin Fayulu and Moisi Katumbi, they are calling for a protest on the day of the president's inauguration. Uh, the protest will be held at in uh, Kinshasa, the capital, and Lubumbashi, the second largest city that's not in the capital district. Um, the apparently the the uh, the diocese dioceses dioceses <laughs> diocese the Catholic Church of the Congo, all of the bishops of the region are apparently very influential and have been also speaking out against uh, Chisakedi's quote-unquote landslide win. Um, it's curious because the, the people, the, the, the popular movement, uh, that's wanting a real democracy has the support of the you know of the world pretty much of anybody who values democracy and actual freedom not a capital F freedom trademark that the that we like to sell in America uh, so I haven't seen anything yet about uh, how that how that's gonna go so, but I'll let you know. Um, another unfortunate situation in the Congo. This is affecting both the Democratic Republic of the Congo and the Republic of Congo. Uh, right now, there are extremely intense floods uh, in the river that are happening at the river, and that just so happens to be where the majority of those populations live. Um, right now, in the the Republic, they have a, the, the casualties are much lower, um, 12 dead as of, uh, as of now, but there's a, uh, like 60,000 plus people whose homes have been destroyed. Um, unfortunately, the D Democratic Republic of the Congo does not, it, it, it gets considerably worse here, 300 dead as of now. And 300,000 plus households that have been destroyed. Um, another unfortunate consequence of climate change. Uh, something that we could have prevented. We should have been trying to prevent. Unfortunately, impoverished nations like these don't have the luxury of being able to make different, I guess, more conscious choices. Because they... they um, 
It's from The Dark Knight. Uh, I don't get political points for being an idealist. I have to do the best I can with what I have. So that's exactly the situation that these poor people are having to deal with is they have to, they're trying to make do with all they can. So um, with all the flooding, just heaps and heaps of garbage are now everywhere. <laughs> Uh, a lot of it is plastic bottles because that's one of the only ways that they can get clean water a lot of the time. So in like rural places and the more impoverished parts of the cities. So it's a, it's a two for one special there and it's not. Unfortunately, it's it seems like it's going to be getting worse. I'll obviously keep you posted, but um, what else? There's another one in the Congo. Like, people can't catch a fucking break. So, what's going on is... In the... Democratic Republic of the Congo, there is in... Uh, like a hardline fundamentalist... Uh, Muslim fundamentalist... Like, terrorists, basically. Um, armed militia groups. That are... Causing a lot of problems like no fucking kidding but um so there was a un uh like brigade or whatever that was sent in to help the the government fight these um these militias and for the the democratic republic of the congo was Getting, they have the perception that the UN uh, brigade or task force or whatever was doing more harm than good, and so they they're going to be expelled. Uh, this was approved by the UN Security Council, which like they have unanimous vote to approve or deny things. So the president requested it to be remove them to be removed and so there we go it's so two about 2000 are going to be mo uh, leaving around in q2 that's the first phase and r the total <laughs> the total uh group size was uh about 13 and a half thousand 14,000 something in that neighborhood so if two thousand is the first phase this is still going to take a while um as the un forces pull out the congolese military will be start will be taking over it's going to be starting in the south kivu province uh this is um one of those times where um, i have conflicting feelings because what yet yeah, you have the it's a, it's really multifaceted here because yes the Congolese they have the right to their own sovereignty right so if they want the UN troops out then okay they're gone they have to leave but at the same time like the order is coming from somebody who's uh, who's <laughs> the validity of his second election is you know is uh, pretty pretty soft so like this is the guy who's calling for them to leave and the when his when the own when the citizens of the of the nation have been calling for him to leave it's uh i don't know the statistics of what how much fighting was happening so I can't really say if uh, they're effective or not, but I mean, fourteen thousand extra troops, man! Like, how can you, how can you turn that down? Uh, that like that's that's what the those troops are for, man. Is to fucking help help guys like you out. But uh, I guess I'll have to take a look at the numbers before before we can say. Um, it just does not stop for the Congo. Uh, I have this one. I had it labeled as uh, Rwanda, so I forgot. I, yeah, I, it escaped 
my recollection, but three Congolese soldiers accident. Well, that's the that's the hang up here. Like, is it or is it not? But so they accidentally crossed into the Congo from Rwanda or into Rwanda from the Congo. Excuse me. Um, and because they were lost when they came upon a group of Rwandan soldiers, they started. Uh, they they engaged one another, and one of the Congolese soldiers was killed. Uh, the reporting is that the Congolese shot first, um, but uh, so that's I guess where the accidental part comes into it. Like they didn't know they were in Rwanda, so they thought Rwandan soldiers were in their territory, uh, but. Um, they're still in cust. Two, the two were taken alive, and the one, the one who was killed, is still also being held. And uh, the Congolese government obviously wants their soldiers back. Uh, they have quite a spat, the Rwandan and Congolese governments. The problem being that there was a. Uh, uh, Islamist, Islam, is, Islamist, I think is with the way, what, what the term is now, but those, uh, Muslim terrorist, uh, militias that are, some of that violence is spilling over into Rwanda, so that's been causing a lot of problems for them. Uh, Libya. Man. Man, the shit just does not stop in Africa. All right, so there are some labor protests, uh, some strikes that are being threatened to block some oil and gas uh, refineries that are in Tripoli. The, the name of the movement is the Corruption Eradication Movement. You know, uh, can't, could not be further, could not be closer to on the nose than that. Uh, to, so they're disrupting op operations at the Malita complex, which uh, so that particular complex is notable because they the Libyan government, the Libya, Lib the National Oil Corporation, which is a state owned um, oil, what exporter or whatever, and the Italian company any have like the Italians have an exclusive agreement with that like to get oil from that facility because they invested in its uh, you know in upgrades and stuff in its improvements so the uh, the protesters want National Oil Corporation the chairman is Farhat Bengdara and they want him removed from his seat over corruption allegations. No shit. And they want his input on any further dealings to be stopped now. Um, I know that when there was, like in the Arab Spring, that was fucking almost 15 years ago. Um, this was one of the bugaboos that had the Libyans really upset. Uh, was situations exactly like this. So it seems like time is a flat circle. You would, I don't know. I don't know how much sway the Italians have here, but it would be nice to know if they did. Because, because they have exclusivity with that facility, they could, I don't, they could do something, right? I would hope anyway that they could have some sort of influence there. Um, hopefully, they they don't get violent. I, I would, as much as I want them to not have to live under the fucking boot of corrupt pigs. Oh, yeah. I would prefer to not have to for all of us, especially them, to have to go through another situation like the Arab Spring. Okay. 
the there okay, I didn't I'm gonna be honest with you I didn't know this place existed <laughs> it's uh the it's an island nation that's called Comoros and it gained its independence from France in 1975 and since that time we're coming up on 50 years uh there have been either attempted or successfully you know completed coups approximately 20 so like somewhere in the neighborhood of 20 coups in that 50 year time period uh, that's nuts so this is on the map because the current president uh, azali asumani he wins his fourth term as president it's a uh, it's five-year terms, right? And uh, like the Congo, the all the opposition candidates were screaming f like corruption almost immediately. This one situation, one of the opponents, his name is Salim Isa. He says that. Um, there were soldiers taking ballot boxes before mo a lot of the people could vote in the where was this the Anjuan region of New Makele hmm. and uh, the another opponent oh fuck me uh, it, a Baraka Muini Baraka I think it is I uh, was talking about uh, ballot stuffing in Mwali uh, for the the uh, now fourth time re-elected or third time re-elected president. Uh, naturally, the the Asumani campaign denies all of this. Ooh, but I don't know. I uh, if I were doing it that much. Like, well, like, do you really want to be out and out with it? It's like, fuck me, 20 coups in 50 years. That's wild. Um, it's unfortunate. Like, they're still, they're, they're still a uh, French territory not too far away from them. And I don't expect that French intervention of any kind would be uh, received well and like as I the more I read the more I see like this shit happens all the time uh, fuck it's bad so like the Congolese are ejecting the UN the Comoros peoples are probably gonna have uh probably going to refuse any outside assistance I mean can you really blame them after having been so horribly treated for the last like 500 years and that's obviously putting it really lightly um I will have to see if, if another fucking coup another notch in the belt is what we're going to get out of it. Um, but as with all of these, we will keep an eye on it. Um, two things um, before, damn it, still haven't even hit Europe or the fucking Middle East outside of the Ukraine or the Palestine situation. And haven't hit Europe outside of the Ukraine situation. F okay. Well, two more things and then we'll wrap this one up. I'll have to just come back. Come back around with another one sooner. So, in Nigeria. Major explosion in um, Ibadan is the name of the city. Two people dead. Uh, dozens more injured and uh, times two or whatever people that whose homes were 
at least partially destroyed and they can't they don't have anywhere to anywhere else to go <clears throat> so <laughs> the <laughs> the conclusion was and like this is by all accounts this is this conclusion is on the up and up uh is that the explosives were being held in a private residence i have my note on here is like an asshole yeah that's you, stupid games fucking like butthole prizes or whatever the fuck the saying is so it's an illegal mining crew that were living in that house because they're fucking assholes and so they were keeping their explosives in their asses so what do you expect Maybe you should try not being an illegal miner. But I, I guess that's easy for me to say, right? <laughs> Sitting in the fucking lap of luxury over here. Relatively speaking, anyway. The the uh, province of... This province of Nigeria is called Oyo. I think I'm just trying to use my uh, Spanish vowels on <laughs> fucking this shit. Uh, on African words, it's not going well, I don't think. But the governor, uh, Sei Makinde, is taking care of his peeps. Uh, the They're uh, getting put up in hotels by uh, by the government. The governor's, on the governor's dime. So not his personal dime, but regional dime. But, I mean... Yeah, that's what that's what it's for. That's what you exist for. So take care of your people, man. Um, now, in the, I'm not sure. Uh, for the longest time, it it took me a, a quite a bit of courage to ask how this was pronounced, but it wasn't. Once I heard it, and like, fuck me, I'm so dumb. It's Niger, right? It's French. Um, but they are, so there was a coup there, so the, and the military junta is still in control. They announced a military cooperation pact with Russia. Um, the defense ministers, uh, of Russian defense ministers, Yunus Bek Oyevkarov and Alexander Fomin, were with the appointed defense minister Salif Umodi. Oof, loaded name. It's um All right. Niger their their plans for like this what they're wanting to get out of this is combat readiness. Is that's th those are the terms that they used. Um oh fuck. His this name is going to kill me. General Abdurahamane, I think I did that one good. Uh, General Tiani, that's what we're going with. Um, so, yeah, the coup, uh, Mohammed Bazoum was ousted in July. Um, he was n not at all a, uh, you know, like he was not a good Boy Scout by any stretch. So it's not, um, yeah, it's one of those things like, he's, like you should have seen this coming, fucking moron, but um, yeah, military, military dictatorships are not much better. The, so the acting prime minister, he's appointed by General Tiani. His name is Ali Mahamane. Lamine Zain. Wow, mouthful. He's uh he's going to be. I think actually that he should be at this point in in his trip to Moscow. He's going to meet with the uh, his some other counterparts, defense. Maybe meet with uh, other generals and stuff. See what what they have to offer, but. I bring this up because this is another like I I brought up the Chinese port in Peru. Right? This is them they're buying influence here. It's and that's going to have a third and fourth order effects 
an immediate second order effect is Brazil is going to, you know, be a little bit more. They're already with the um, the Taiwanese election that happened uh, last week. At just after the Brazilian uh, Lula da Silva was he came out with the one no it's a one china policy like taiwan is a part of china they're they're uh they they are bending the knee to the to the chinese communist party so that like these effects are already starting to to be realized and the un- unintended or maybe well i expect intended by on the chinese but what people don't are not going to foresee with this is that there are no shit there's other countries that are right in the area of that deep water port <laughs> they're going to tell the panamanians to go fuck themselves and they're going to go to peru instead and all the while it's going to be like a like the projects from the uh, Inflation Reduction Act and all the rest of it that uh, Biden put into put into play, and they had signs that said that this project, courtesy of Joe Biden, like, yeah, the Chinese are doing the same thing, and they're doing it in uh, in Peru at this. They've had it throughout the its entire development, and now Niger partnering with the Russians. Uh, there are pretty significant resources in Niger that because of the invasion of Ukraine, Russia has had a considerable amount of difficulty trying to get their hands on these things. So like you've, we've seen them purchasing fire, uh, uh, artillery munitions from like North Korea, from Iran, because they are able to source these materials. And so now they have, now they have a partner in the region and the of all the groups or all the nations that you would want to be having that shit having the materials to make whatever is the raw materials even is russia iran um china right nobody who's intentions or that who harbors ill will towards the west right but that's the uh that seems to be the road that we're going down while uh our backing of is this a whole is it's gonna sound like a loaded phrase but like it's fucking true whether it doesn't matter which side you support our backing of israel in this conflict in the gaza strip is that is marring our reputation more in uh it's and it's compounded because of the the bullshit in iraq right so that was the beginning of right like the whole death to america chant shit and now we're while we're no longer actively praising and say like uh, explicitly supporting the Israelis, it, we're still not saying anything directly to them about what they're doing and the objectively inhumane things that they're doing. I really don't give a shit what you feel about who or what what they're doing is wrong that's all there is to it uh, don't don't fucking hit me with the october 7th they like they deserve it no they don't they didn't do anything uh okay i'm gonna i'm gonna stop i'm gonna get i'm gonna start fucking ranting um right so this is russia getting a partner in the region that has access to a lot of raw materials that they need uh not a good thing and 
this sort of cooperation or like if you're a little bit more able financially like china is able to purchasing influence whereas here it's a partnership so yeah like what are like what the fuck are we doing well all of the big players who want our heads on on stakes they're making moves and we're doing what can't even fucking decide if climate change is real because it fucking is but some people are fucking stupid disingenuous or whatever whatever the case is but yeah that's it um i yeah there's i put way too much in this so we got um africa and the americas and so one thing out of australia so there's still europe i still got a lot of stuff on asia um so we'll i will be back um i after like the new hampshire primaries after that i will uh, i definitely want to do a uh, U.S. edition first get to talk about that to talk about the primaries the Iowa caucuses and the New Hampshire primaries and so we'll see uh, uh, we'll see when I do that but it should be before our regular scheduled uh, sit down time but um What do we got here? Um, if you want to check out more shit that I do, lvxmedia.net. That's where everything gets published. So, like, whatever. I'm trying to make as much variety as I can so that we can offer you whatever your your hearts desire. Uh, so, social media is... The social media handle is lvxmedia.net on everything if you can't find it we're not on it uh uh interaction with social media posts is cool it i obvious i appreciate it very much um if you leave comments or whatever and if it's something that warrants a response i'll give you one um without question uh or if you would like to reach out in a way that is to be included herein um the, the phone number, it's 833-LUX-PODS. Uh, if you call, it goes straight to voicemail. If you text or call, it's anonymous. If you don't tell me who you are, I don't know who you are. But um, it, would, it would be nice if you did. Uh, either way, if you have questions, comments, concerns, whatever um, topics that you want to hear about, hear more about, then, yeah, let me know there. Uh, so... Uh, last thing is fucking rating and reviewing wherever you're listening like reviews uh, whatever like if you have the time that's I would appreciate it very much um, but what matters what helps the most is uh, leaving a rating um, if you if you are so inclined to do so please uh, hit me with a fiver if for some reason you're not feeling a five then uh you got my number 833 lux spots tell me what's tell me what's up what can i do better i'm always open to feedback and always willing to try new things to give you a better listening experience uh last bit so they are starting back up this thursday it's a group called Common Defense. Now, it's a national veterans group that it's a like grassroots organizing. They do a bit of uh, political action, and they like it's a national group that's mostly almost exclusively focused on American politics, which understandable, but the thing, the unintended like unintended result of that is that the type of people that they, like the politicians they endorse or 
or the politicians that they advocate for or that they work closely with are the types of people who would want to who want to do better with these situations. Um, so if you want to join up there, the meeting's on Thursday, right? So it's only a few days away, but it's um, lvx.at slash cdef. That's, uh, that's the membership sign-up page. lux.at slash cdef. Uh, aid. Okay, so I haven't talked about them all. I've only talked about Congo, and I know... I've mentioned Sudan in the past. All of these are countries that I've talked about before in some form or another. So I've been keeping their keeping the links alive. So if you are ever able to, you can if you can throw a few dollars at these organizations. I I promise I really <laughs> I did a good amount of digging to make sure that they're legit. Uh, no stupid amounts of overhead like other crappy ass so quote unquote nonprofits. This these are the places where you're gonna get like the most good will be done with your donation. Um, so lvx.at that's the shorthand for everything any link that I ever throw at you lvx.at so if I say lux at you know there you go. Um, we have Afghanistan, Myanmar, Sudan, Congo, Palestine, Ukraine. LVX.AT slash, and then add the country name. It'll take you right to their donation pages. So if you can, would be a great thing, but, you know, times are fucking rough for everybody. I get it. That's not a fucking picnic over here either. So with that being said, um, I will be back in your fucking earballs sometime late Wednesday early Thursday something like that as we uh, start talking looking at the primaries the caucuses and the primaries all the endorsements that have been coming out for he who shall not be named uh <laughs> All right, that's going to do it for this episode. Thank you very much for listening, and uh, catch you next time.